Hi everyone, this is Sharon here. Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to talk about how did I move to Australia with a job. The few things that I'm going to talk in this video are like how did I first develop the interest about like moving to a foreign country and settling down in a foreign country. How did I actually move into Australia with a job. And finally, for people who are looking out for various options about moving to a foreign country for work, what are all the typical options that you have, which is the option that is more suitable for your uh, scenario and how to make use of all those options to the best extent. So make sure that you watch this video till the end. So coming to my story, that, uh, I started my career in 2010. When I started my career, one thing that I promised to myself was I shouldn't move out of Chennai never ever again in my life. So that was the thing that I promised to myself when I started my career um, in Chennai. But pretty soon into my career, I realized that in order to drop in my career, like I have to move out of my comfort zone. I have to move out of my comfort zone, meet a lot of new people, work with new people and experience new things in my life. And things really went out well for me. Like I moved to Bangalore, I met a lot of interesting people. I had an opportunity to work with a lot of interesting startups and most of my data science learning happened once I moved out of my comfort zone. So now coming to the actual part, like how I got interested about moving to a foreign country. Like I was working in startups in uh, Bangalore. Like uh, I did not exactly had an opportunity about like um, maybe moving on, on to a uh, foreign country um, in, in my job. So I was uh, paid really well. I was experiencing like uh, a good culture. Like uh, there were a lot of interesting things I was learning in my job, but there wasn't any option for me to move to a foreign country. So I wasn't really interested about like moving to a foreign country. So at some point in time, some of my friends started moving abroad. Like some of them went abroad for higher studies and some of them went on site. So while talking to them, I started hearing about the working culture, about like the lifestyle and slowly like the things started getting slightly interesting. So it wasn't having a huge impact on me, but it was like uh, interesting to hear about all those stories. At some point in time, like my sister moved to UK. So this is when I started to hear about much more stories, like how good the educational systems are, like how clean the cities are. I started seeing all the pictures and the different places that they go. And I thought like, why not maybe uh, move to a foreign country for at least a few years in my, a few years in my career and then see how things are. But still, it did not have a huge impact on me. Things really started getting more interesting when I uh, got an opportunity to go to Amsterdam on a uh, uh, one-week uh, trip, a fully sponsored uh, trip. So the moment I landed in Amsterdam and I started experiencing the new country, the new culture, and I started uh, meeting new people, I decided later like, I should move to a foreign country at least for a few years and experience this kind of a culture. So that's when like the real interest uh, traded into me, like to move to a foreign country, like to explore the various opportunities and options that I have in order to move to a foreign country. So I started exploring about the various options that are available for me in order to move to a foreign country. The three typical options that were available for me was one, moving to a foreign country for higher studies, like to complete my studies, spend a few more years, see how things are working out. The second option was uh, like apply for a permanent residency and uh, move to a foreign country, look for, out, uh, look for a job and see how things are working out. The third option was look for sponsorships, look for companies that are willing to sponsor your visa and uh, sponsor your trip to the foreign country for work. So these were all the uh, three typical options that, I, that were available for me. Like I will be going through the option one and two uh, later in this video. So now coming back to my story, the reason why like the option one as well as the option two were not suitable for me was like I did not have the money exactly for doing the higher studies. Like I was still repaying my educational loan. Uh, so I did not have the money to uh, go for a bank loan for my higher studies. The second option, like the PR option, didn't work out really well for me was because I was having a really a good career. Like my job was uh, like a, a really good. It was giving me a lot of interesting opportunities. I did not wanted to like to stop all of it and then move out to a foreign country and then maybe look out for an, another, another job and kind of restart my career. So uh, I did not uh, like I had uh, the appetite to take that risk. So the third option, of, of course, uh, the one that was available for me was look out for various jobs which were providing the sponsorships. 
it was uh, difficult because like, there were very very few jobs and very few countries which actually provide sponsorship visas like work visas uh, and uh, take people outside of their country so i started exploring about the sponsorship jobs that are available in various countries i soon realized that the best way to identify the sponsorship jobs are to look out for the job portals that are famous in the local market for example i was looking out for various uh, op op job opportunities in canada in australia and few european countries so each of these countries had an a job portal that was quite famous within the country. For example, uh, Canada uh, had an, a job portal called as Indeed, which was the most famous at that point in time in Canada. Similarly, in Australia, there was a job portal called as Seat, which was the most famous. And similarly, like few European countries had their own job portals. So many of these uh, sponsorships jobs were posted only in those kind of job portals. They were not available in LinkedIn. They were not available in uh, any other uh, job portals so i had to go into those job portals like update my profile and then start looking out for search for various jobs where the sponsorships are provided and start applying for it it wasn't exactly very easy like there were very very few jobs which exactly were providing the sponsorships and which were ready to take employees outside of their country and who are not residing in their country so it was a slightly difficult task but still like i would say like it's something that uh, can work out well for you and uh, you need to definitely try this option if you are really interested in moving to a foreign country on a sponsorship visa and then slowly like after talking to few other people i realized that the the second best option for me is to talk to people who are already in uh, uh, a foreign country and working in a foreign country and maybe in a relevant field. So I started exploring about all my friends who, who are working in data as well as data science and who are in a foreign country, like the places where I am interested in moving to. So I started talking to them. I asked them to uh, let me know about any job opportunities that comes up uh, with a uh, sponsorship. So that's uh, how like, I got to know about a uh, job opportunity here in Deloitte, Australia and i gave a couple of rounds of interviews and things really went well and i got the job and my visa was sponsored by Deloitte australia and i moved here with the sponsorships so that uh, was exactly my story and now uh, moving back to the other two options like the option one as well as option two and how to uh, check like which option is more suitable for you if you are really very early in your career and if you have the appetite to uh, like uh, to go for a bank loan so then i would definitely suggest that maybe you can go for an higher studies and move to an uh, foreign country so before coming to australia like i was uh, having an uh, thought process that um, taking a huge edu educational loan and moving to a foreign country is quite risky but after coming here now i realize that it is not it is not too much of a risky option like people who come here like most of them like they end up working here spending some time working here and eventually like most of them even like settle down here even the government is encouraging people to stay for few more years and to work in the local market uh, because like it gives them an additional revenue it gives them additional revenue as tax people who typically come here for higher studies they do uh, like a part-time part-time jobs and they tend to uh, like earn enough money at least to cover their living expense so they do take an, a huge uh, uh, educational loan but they would be able to look out for various uh, part-time jobs that will help them in managing the living expenses while they are doing the uh, studies so if you are thinking about moving to an, uh, a foreign country for work if you are pretty early in your career right, or if you have just completed your undergraduation so i would uh, say that you can consider about moving to a foreign country uh, for higher studies it is actually good you will be getting to meet a lot of new people that like you will be experiencing the like a new environment in which you learn and it will be more likely you would be able to get a job as well as experience like the working culture here so it is definitely not an option uh, which is too much of an risk. So coming to the second option now, like applying for a permanent residency. 
So in order to apply for a permanent residency, it usually takes uh, like about uh, maybe one to three lakh per person, depending upon the country that you are applying for. So there are a few countries uh, which uh, have uh, like uh, which have like uh, invitation for uh, the permanent residency application uh, again like uh, Canada and Australia and then few other countries as well. The time uh, for this particular process depends upon the country and depends upon the situation. For example right now in the COVID situation like uh, I'm not sure if uh, things would uh, be as fast as, as it was like uh, pre-COVID. So maybe after COVID like, uh, things will slowly return, uh, return to normal and then at the, that the time uh, and then the processing time should reduce a lot. So if you have uh, in, like, uh, enough for funds for uh, PR application, like either for you as well as for your family, you can definitely try this option. Like this will be more suitable for people who have already gained a significant amount of experience in their career because like, the PR applications are generally based on the point system. So uh, in Canada as well as in Australia, they are based on point system. Like in most countries, it will be based on your experience, like uh, what kind of experience that you are going to bring into the country and how you are going to contribute in the development of the particular country. So if you are someone who is having a uh, sufficient amount of experience, a like few years of experience in a uh, particular industry, and uh, you have maybe you have a good educational background then you can definitely try out for this particular option it is slightly more expensive that like you need to make some investment and uh, the, the processing time usually takes uh, like from few months to maybe up to an year but once the PR is granted then what happens is you can come into this particular country like uh, if it is like if you get an a PR like for either Canada or for Australia you will be given a time frame like within which you need to come into this particular country and uh, you will be able to look out for a job that is more suitable for your career. So I used to again think uh, like uh, it's more uh, risky, it's like it's more risky like to move into a foreign country without a job and look out for a job without knowing a lot of many people uh, in that particular country. But I started realizing like after coming here, there, were, there, there are a lot, lot of people who uh, apply for PR, like who quit their job, come here, or like who take some kind of a long leave, come here, apply for various jobs, and then see how things are working out. And most of them, they end up uh, getting a job and settling down here. So it isn't as difficult as I used to think. So if you are someone who is interested in a uh, career in a foreign country, so you, you have these three different options. Like uh, the first option is join uh, foreign higher studies. The second option is apply for an PR. The third option is uh, going for a sponsorship. So the first option is uh, more suitable for people who are early in their career, who don't have enough experience, uh, who don't have enough points uh, for an PR application. So the second, the second option, PR application, is more suitable for someone who is already having a good amount of experience. The, the third option, like the sponsorships, are suitable for people who have uh, who have accomplished something in their job, like who have uh, something extra to showcase that would help them in order to get a job on a sponsorship. So these are all the typical options that are available for you guys. I hope you would have uh, learned something new out of this video. If you like what I am doing here, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That's it for now.